Well, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Mac, Mac McNeil. Um, just a few things uh, to introduce you. Uh, founder and, and uh, of the Permission Marketing uh, platform, Sign Up To. Yeah. Um, just like to point out, really, just reading here, very interesting. After starting his career in one of the um, first new uh, media agencies uh, dedicated to the music industry, um, Matt now uh, is the CEO of um, Sign Up To, uh, overseeing strategy and global expansion. Um, and uh, the awards are coming fast and free to uh, Sign Up To. Um, one of the Cavoziers Future 500 and um, Young Gun from uh, Growing Business Magazine. So over to you, Mark. Thanks very much. Um, can everyone hear me all right? Is that good enough? Excellent. Um, so I'm, I'm going to talk um, today about um, how email fits into an a increasingly mobile world. And um, I felt I, I really had to start by, by answering the obligatory question, which seems to get asked of me um, every 18 months or so by journalists, which is, isn't email marketing dead? Um, uh, they've said that when Google Wave came out, if anyone remembered that, when Facebook messaging came out, and now with the increasing shift to mobile, it, I think it's a... It's pertinent to, to answer this question again. Um, and at Sign Up To, we like research. We like to, to sort of base things on numbers. So um, we wanted to take a look at this and see how email fitted in with the whole digital messaging world um, and ask the question, is, is email still relevant? Um, so um, we pulled some of our own data. We pulled data from a lot of other reputable sources. Um, we've done this for the last couple of years, looking at the, the relative sizes of different digital channels. Um, and as you can see, um, SMS is, is hugely dominant. Um, there's basically a, a, a mobile, mobile number for the equivalent of, of everyone on the planet. Um, but email is very much the next runner on that, and it's, it's been increasing. So there was a large increase between 2012 and 2013 with uniquely identifiable email addresses. And in fact, if you stacked up every social channel put together, you still would only get to about two-thirds of the addressable market of email. So it's very, very much still a relevant channel today. Um, in fact, you know, effectively, if you haven't got an email address in today's digital society, um, it, it's the digital uh, equivalent of homelessness, in effect. Like, you can't access a vast majority of services. So email is an incredibly relevant channel for people. Um, so uh, the answer is yes. Uh, like, e email is very much still alive and kicking and uh, a very important part of uh, any digital marketing strategy. Um, in fact, according to the, the uh, chief, uh, the CMO council, 67% of marketers say that email is actually their most successful digital marketing activity. So it's well worth consideration. Um, a, a quick look before I go on about why that is. Well, uh, with the increasing dominance of social, um, email fills a, a very important role because it's actually a personal and, and private channel. It's the one channel that people have direct control over. It's also completely non-proprietary, so no one else owns your email data. No one else owns your identity via email. It's not uh, beholden to Twitter or Facebook or someone else who can change the rules and, and uh, stop you contacting your customer or accessing your data. And from an end user's point of view, you can save those messages for later, which is actually really hard to do with most other channels. So you can use that as a, a, a storing mechanism. I'll come on to why this is really important later. But it offers up a, a huge number of opportunities for you as a marketer. So looking at how the landscape has changed, um, in 2011, 27% of emails were opened on mobile devices. Um, in the last two years, we're now looking at 47% of opens are on mobile devices. So that's iPhone, Android, tablets. Um, in fact, uh, this is a, a worldwide figure from Litmus, but actually in the UK, we're seeing it already topping 55% for most UK audiences. So mobile is massively important. And uh, the trend suggests that this is going to reach 60% by 2014. Um, which really means that email is mobile marketing. It is the primary personal addressable channel for mobile marketing these days. Um, in fact, um, some research from Experian was showing that 50% of mobile purchases are actually triggered via email campaigns, which is quite a staggering proportion. And this brings some challenges, though. 33% um, of people report that they're using mobile to actually screen their emails, to just get rid of things that aren't relevant as quickly as they can. And 70% of users say that they're just going to delete emails that don't look good on mobile devices. But there's a massive opportunity here if you want to put the effort in 
because staggeringly, only 18% of people are optimizing their emails for mobile display. So if you can get this right, there is a huge opportunity to gain an advantage over your competitors. Massive opportunity. So how do you go about optimizing um, emails for mobile? There's a couple of different approaches you can take uh, to this. And I'm going to spend a, a bit of time talking through these, and, and hopefully we'll have uh, some time for questions at the end. Um, you've got the very simple approach, which is actually just forget everything you, you've seen about technical solutions and just design for mobile as your, your primary channel. Um, so focus on making sure that your campaigns look great on mobile and treat desktop as, as a secondary device. Um, and I'll come on to ways that you can approach that in a moment. But if you haven't got a, a huge amount of, of resource or uh, access to, to tools, just focus on making a campaign that displays great on mobile. And it will, consequently, it will be very effective on the desktop anyway. The better to solution, though, is what's known as responsive design. Um, you probably come across this in, in the web world. Um, it, it, to explain what it means in email terms, it's effectively that your email code will respond to the screen size of the device and the nature of the device that people are viewing it on, um, and it will adapt to fit that device's screen. Um, I say mostly because this predominantly works on iOS devices. Um, Android devices are not, um, not so compatible with um, current techniques for responsive email design. Um, but actually what we're seeing is um, iOS devices are far and away um, the, the driver for uh, mobile email opens at the moment anyway. Um, and eventually Android will catch up. They're just waiting for the, the software to support it. Um, responsive design is a more of a technical solution. It generally takes a bit more resource to actually achieve um, the perfect results with this. It's using um, some of the web techniques which up until now have basically not been accessible to email marketers. Um, for a long time, email marketing has been um, stuck in the, in the sort of the 90s of uh, web design. Most of the techniques you want to use on a website won't work in email. But with mobile devices, they actually start to support things called CSS media queries, which mean that you can um, adapt um, the display of different objects. Um, you can hide, resize, and show different elements um, within your email campaigns. So you can actually create very, very different experiences for people on desktop devices and mobile devices. And you can use that to, to create some very, very powerful effects. Um, I'll show you a, a really simple example. So um, this is a, an old one of our, our newsletters, and this is how it appears on a, a desktop device. Um, uh, so a, a normal email client, you would see it like this with the images and the, and the text in there. And on a mobile device, we can actually just change the font size and strip any images out. So you just create a much more um, fluid reading experience. And quite often for mobile, the best solution is actually just to simplify the experience for the end user. You don't need the extraneous images. You want to focus very much on what the core message is that you want to convey. So it leads me on neatly to what are the key considerations when you're, you're designing email for mobile. Um, first and foremost, the obvious one, you have a really small viewing area to play with. So you've generally got 480 by 320 pixels. So much, much smaller than you would normally design for if you're designing for a, a web-based idea. But you have got the benefit that users are very used to scrolling on mobile devices. Um, what you ideally want to avoid when you're designing mobile campaigns, though, is making, uh, forcing people to pinch and zoom to read content. That, that, that really um, lowers engagement. So this is where the responsive side of it really comes into play, because you can start to enlarge the fonts that are displayed on the device. You can start to shrink images down and move them around so that people can just scroll up and down on their device and, and comfortably read the email campaign, which means that you really need to work with a single column design. Um, and so I, you've probably seen this is becoming increasingly common now. You used to get a lot of email campaigns that had sort of multiple columns, two, three columns there moving more and more back towards a single column, simple design where you can just scroll up and down. And again, this works really well for desktop as, as well as mobile because you have a lot more control over sort of where users are moving through the, the content. You can create that journey a bit more within the email campaign. So uh, working with a single column design is, is um, definitely of the moment. You've also got a really short attention span to deal with, um, shorter than you've got on, on desktop, shorter than you've got when, when people are loading a website. You need to do everything you can to grab people's attention and show the value of that campaign as fast as you possibly can. You need to be really, really clear what the call to action is from the campaign as well. So generally, you're driving people to achieve something in your email campaign. Um, 
and make sure you have a really large interaction area. So if you're including links, make sure your font size increases on mobile so it's much easier for people with large fingers to tap on. Um, if you're using buttons, I'll show you a technique in a minute, um, make them big, make them really easy for people to click on. Do not have tiny little call to actions there because you will lose people going through the flow. And a, a really important, really easy trick to do is make sure that you're optimizing both your subject line and the, the pre-header of your email campaign. So the pre-header is effectively the first bit of text that you're, you're placing in your campaign. Because what you'll find is most mobile email clients will take your subject line and they will then append to that the pre-header from your email campaign. So that's the first bit of text you see at the top. So if you can make that engaging and don't just duplicate the subject line there or you're, you're effectively just repeating the same text twice in people's uh, preview, but actually try and incorporate your, your call to action or your key value points. Make sure it sensibly follows on from the subject line of your email and you'll find that that has a substantial effect on your campaign open rates because again, people are using mobile to pre-screen their emails. If you can grab them with an engaging subject line, an engaging pre-header there, they're much more likely to open your campaign. And you can also, um, unfortunately I haven't got time to go into this today, but um, if you uh, get the slide deck afterwards, I can uh, send you some, some links to this, but you can actually use the subject line and pre-header to sort of psychologically prime people to perform the actions that you want to perform in your campaign. So you can actually, um, there are studies that we've done that, that show this. If you're um, using those lines to sort of hint towards certain actions, you will quite substantially increase the proportion of people that are performing your, your call to action. Um, final really important thing is make sure that your destination site works really well on mobile. Um, We've seen a number of people who focus creating a beautifully crafted email campaign and then actually when they get people going through and complete the call to action, it's impossible to use the destination website. So make sure you don't forget uh, the basics there. Um, because again, we're seeing a, a huge proportion of, of click-throughs now are being driven from mobile into, uh, into uh, your, your websites and your web campaigns. So make sure that the actual destination has been optimized as well. Um, so, uh, an example of um, a, a really nice email campaign where they, they've sort of quite simply applied uh, mobile to make this really easy to use. This is a, a recent British Airways campaign. Um, actually, this is the, the desktop version, so it, it's a nice, it's a nice big image. Um, it, it's um, it's really just a, a feel-good campaign that they're running. But on the mobile version of this, what they do is a really nice trick: is they just make all the call-to-action links at the bottom much, much bigger. They're really, really easy for you to click through and perform an action. And actually really simple to do in a, in a mobile responsive template, but a really, really useful feature for end users. Because if you're on a mobile, most likely thing you're going to want to do is perform one of those four actions. And they, rec they recognize that and reformat the email to do that when you view it on a mobile device. Really, really nice touch. Um, so you don't have to go massively overboard with doing this. It's thinking about how you, you know, what you want the end user to do, what they're expecting to do, and just making things easy for them. which brings me on to my next point, is, is make things easy for the, for the user. So focus on the things that you can do which will improve their experience on mobile and think out the box with other things that you can do as well. So um, we're seeing people now having great success in actually building their email mailing lists by using um, really simple old school techniques like um, SMS texting services from adverts from um, table cards in restaurants and things like that. There's always a tendency with mobile to sort of leap in and take a, um, go for the most sort of up-to-date technical solution. So you quite often see people promoting QR, QR codes and things, um, which will then direct you to a form that you have to fill in on your smartphone. Whereas actually, it's a lot e easier for a user to text in their email address to a, a short code and send it. And it's something that everyone's familiar with. They don't need any extra tech to do it. You can get really high response rates. Um, and at the same time, you're actually gathering two channels of, of data for your subscriber. You're getting a, a mobile number and tying it to an email address. Um, I think it's a really low cost, low tech channel, but it works really, really effectively because you're not having to educate the end users to how these things work. So when you're planning your, your mobile campaigns, think outside the box a little and think how you can make things easier for your end user is not always using the highest tech approach. Um, something else we often um, get asked when people are running email campaigns, particularly um, with such a, a mobile audience now, is actually when's the best time to send an email campaign out? Um, the the, the uh, long answer is if you're already running campaigns, you can get the best solution for your audience by actually looking at your data and interrogating that, seeing when people are hitting your website, when they're opening your existing campaigns. But there are some um, important trends that, that we can consider as well. So um, uh, last month we looked at um, a few billion emails that we sent over the previous 12 months, um, all for UK audiences. So we, we honed this down so it's quite specific to the UK. 
um, and we looked at what the trends are for this. It's something we'd done uh, a few years ago back in 2009 when mobile was a much, much smaller um, piece of the puzzle, and we wanted to see how that compared with today. And what we found is that actually um, the stats haven't changed that much. So time of day, um, 3 o'clock, if you haven't got a, another um, better solution, 3 o'clock on average is when you will get the most interactions with your email campaigns. Um, and actually, that hasn't really shifted um, to a great degree uh, as mobile has become more prominent. What we have seen, though, is that you tend to get more activity towards the end of the day than you would get before. There used to be quite a precipitous um, decline at around 5 o'clock, but now actually um, it's a relatively uh, gentle decline in the, in the later hours. So people are still interacting with their emails, but a bit later on in the day. But actually, the general trend is still there. Um, but if you're, you're looking for a good starting point for your campaigns, 3 o'clock is a good point. Um, and day of the week, um, Thursday. Um, it's fairly even across the days in the middle of the week, but Thursday is outperforming the others um, by a fairly clear margin. Um, and the weekends are, are fairly low, although this is um, an average and it can be very industry specific. So we see for e-commerce retailers that are, are working uh, in sort of B2C sales, actually Sunday is a great day to send and it's relatively uncontended, but an awful lot of purchases take place on a Sunday and email can be a really good driver for that. Um, but you can actually go uh, one step further than this. So we've got a, um, a client who's been doing something um, a little bit different and that is actually phenomenally easy to do but really, really effective and this works really well with mobile as well when people are using it to screen their, their campaigns. Um, as I said before, what you, you tend to find um, People like email because they can store emails. They can refer back to them later. A lot of people use their inbox almost as like a to-do list. But the danger you've got, um, you know, people receive so many emails now that you need to make sure that you, you remain top of, top of mind, um, especially if you're doing a, a time-sensitive promotion. Um, so uh, this is a quite a neat way we got around it. So Prezzo restaurants, they... they run a lot of voucher campaigns. They're generally valid for a relatively short period of time. Um, they know when the, the ideal time to send this to the rest of their audience, um, but what they find is that actually then the redemption rate sort of drops off uh, over time. People save the campaigns, but they might forget to come back to it. Um, so we made a really simple um, adjustment to their campaign, and we let people decide when the best time for them is to receive the, the campaign. And um, we actually did this by just adding um, a few links to the bottom of an email campaign, and when you click one of those, it just reschedules that email to be sent to you at the, the time you specified. Um, that adds thousands of pounds worth of revenue to every single email campaign that they send, and it's pretty much the simplest thing you can do. Um, and for mobile responders, it's really, really powerful because they see the campaign on their, their mobile, they think, oh, it sounds like a great offer, actually I'm not ready to, to go out for dinner this week, or maybe I'm gonna go out on Friday. Click that link, it just gets rescheduled back for them at the time they want. Really simple solution, really, really effective, um, can add a, a massive uh, increase to your conversion rates. Um, again, it's just about making things easy for the end user. Um, you could go down the route of trying to preempt when people actually want to receive this campaign and scheduling it at, at different times for different people, but actually you get the best response rate by just asking people when they want it because people's situations change. It's a relatively low-tech solution. It's really, really powerful. I will say again, it works really, really well for mobile campaigns. Um, that brings me to the end of, of my uh, quick presentation. Like I say, I was, I was sort of aiming to allow time for, for questions across uh, email invitation on mobile. In fact, anything around this subject. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to ask anything. Go on. <laughs> Ah, okay, so um, she was asking whether there's, there's a, a solution for, for contacting people who have HTML turned off in their, their email clients. Um, yes, is the, the, the simplest solution. So the, the easiest way to do it, and most, most email marketing platforms will support this, is to send what's called a, a multi-part message. Um, so you can effectively incorporate a, a text email campaign and a HTML email campaign within the same email that you're sending out, um, and the end user's uh, client will then display the right version. So it's particularly relevant for people, you know, if you've got a, a large corporate audience who are still on older Blackberries, um, that's pretty much the only devices that really um, still display plain text. But again, it can be quite an effective way of, of um, engaging with those people. And in fact, if you want to take a really um, low-fi low approach to um, targeting a mobile audience, you could focus on just plain um, plain text messaging, create really compelling copy, focus on engaging copy, and you can really cut through by doing that because so few people spend as much time on the copy as they do on the design and actually copy sells every time. Right. Yes?
Ah, um, so um, just asking whether, whether the, the time to show were for B2C or, or B2B. Um, that's that's a, uh, an amalgamation of B2B and B2C, the 3 p.m. time. We do have it. We have it at that data, actually. We're going to produce, um, issue a report in the next couple of weeks. We actually have it sliced across 22 different sectors, across B2B and B2C. And like I say, you do see predominantly that that is a... a you know, it's it's a fairly um, consistent trend, but there are certain industries where there are there are standout differences. Um, so yeah, um, if you um, yeah pop onto our website, you, you'll find a copy of that that report being issued fairly soon. Anyone else? So uh, any other questions? I know I'll be sending my emails out at 3 p.m. on Thursday, like the rest <laughs> of us. <laughs> any any questions at all? Okay, well. Um, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Feel free. Um, we're, we're, our stand is over in the, the far corner there. So if you uh, have any questions later, if you're, you're shy now, want, want to talk, uh, email or mobile later, please do come across and, and see us. Anyway, thank you for your time and thank you for your. Thank you. Thank you very much.